Meteorologist Tony Lawback is joining me right now. Tony, you said you can learn a lot from looking at uh, how the trees went down. Yeah, the, uh, the damage indicators that the National Weather Service uses to rate tornadoes come from more than just homes. They come from trees, they come from signs, they come from various objects that the tornado inflicts damage. Tree damage typically is a low-end rating. Even something like this would only garner an EF0 tornado. Now, we were looking with the National Weather Service today as they went on their damage survey, taking a look at some of those indications as to what made this tornado rated an EF3. Sunk into the ground. Taps here. Yeah. And just pulled it right out of the ground. Brad Ketchum with the National Weather Service went down the entire path of the storm, starting with the initial points on the southwest part of town, following it to the northeast. So here's the northeast corner where we were with the trees, and down here is Orslin's, uh way down here. So it looks like it made a diagonal path right through the center of town. And most of the concentrated damage is about third through fifth street and Mulberry to Plum is where the most concentrated damage is. Uh, some of the damage you filmed already up there with the, the walls, the exterior walls gone and stuff, and that's the most extensive damage we've found so far. The concentrated area of damage includes several severely damaged homes, one of them losing its entire roof, another home lifted 10 feet off its foundation and dropped back into place, nearly cracked in half. But to assess the damage, surveyors use more detailed pieces of information. There's uh, things in the EF scale that are called damage indicators, where they can actually look at the damage and the type of structures that are done. Here at the high school on the northeast part of town, those indicators included a steel building as well as this light pole. Ben, that sturdy of a pole at the base to bring it down, because it's snapped right there at the base, the and to bring it straight down, yeah, that's considered EF2 type damage. This is EF1 or EF2 here. Um, this part of this building as well. Those clues all across the damage path help lead the National Weather Service to make the rating of this tornado. That's what I want. All right, now where we've been looking at all day, of course, has been the structures, obviously the big story, but again, we take into consideration everything that happens with this tornado going through because a lot of tornadoes are rated in areas that don't have homes and structures, so they have to use these indicators to help rate those tornadoes as well. I would say it's due south of due east. This funnel that I'm watching is actually, I'm facing due southwest. It is moving from right to left across my point of view. Uh, a very, very stout funnel halfway to the ground. Uh, we, are, uh, we are as close to a, a tornado on this storm as we've been. So we're, we're keeping an eye, but a very, very well pronounced funnel. There is some rain that is between me and the ground on this thing. We might be, uh, we might be looking at a tornado right now here, Jay. I think I might have a touchdown or very, very close to it. I've got dust on the ground, Jay. We've got a tornado in progress. Okay, so we now have a tornado, so we're going to continue our live coverage. Our Cake First Alert meteorologist, Tony Lawback. So we definitely have circulation. I, I can confirm ground circulation. Not a lot of debris lofted up. I don't know. It kind of looks like it's in an area full of trees, but I'm just seeing dust. It is not fully condensed, but there is rotating debris on the ground. I heard you guys commenting after the last live hit about the, the zipping up of the jacket here. I got a confession to make. Zippers give me fits. That's why I love pullover hoodies. Well, especially with those with gloves. It. I can't snap my fingers either. Yeah, yeah. Well, I take them off for that. But yeah, you know, I can't snap my fingers either. So the gloves really just hide it all. But hey, one thing I can do is stand out here in the snow. And are you kidding me right now? These flakes are huge. This is just an incredible scene here. I ne This never gets old. 20 years of covering weather. I love the snow and I'll tell you what folks it is starting to get a little slick out here standing here in the parking lot there is a slight glaze of some slush that's starting to form here in the parking lot that I'm standing in behind me here K96 US 56 still just wet but the snow coming down as heavy as I've seen it all morning certainly is going to start to create some issues maybe on some of these untreated surfaces sidewalks parking lots maybe some of these neighborhood back roads because this is also uh, not just um, reporting on some of the inconveniences, but also it turned into a rescue effort, as far as that, what I understand from your point of view. Can you talk about that? Well, yesterday, I, of course, I was out and about, and I was in Kingman, and one of the areas I was shooting, I, I'd gotten out of the car, and I heard 
screaming meows uh, from oh. a cat that at first I didn't see. Uh, once I started setting up, I actually saw him. He was over by a fence. Uh, she actually, she was over by a fence, kind of on an island surrounded by floodwaters. And of course, between me and the cat was probably about a six foot wide gap of water, which was only, you know, ankle deep, maybe a little bit more than that. But that poor cat was terrified out of its mind. So I, I bravely took the five steps across the water to, to go retrieve this poor little cat. Um, their owners evacuated from one of the nearby houses there. And unfortunately, she kind of got lost in the shuffle. Um, I took her to the local vet there in Kingman. They fortunately took her in, and I was able later that afternoon to track down the owners, uh, and I believe this morning they got reunited uh, with their cat. So, um, I, you know, I'm a cat person, always been, and uh, I, I, it killed me to see that poor cat is just soaking wet and terrified, and as soon as I brought it into the car, it, warm, it cleaned itself for a while, and it was all purring and loving on me, and my wife thought I was bringing home another one, and I was like, <laughs> no, no, this one belonged to somebody. Taking a look outside at Hayes, this is whiteout conditions in Hayes right now on our Central Care Cancer Center KCAM. Also, we're hearing reports of power outages there as well. You see the winds out of the north at 39 miles an hour with a 44 mile an hour wind gust just recently. So a lot of heavy snow and blowing snow there. So blizzard conditions in Hayes. Goodland starting to wind down just a little bit. The winds though still fairly strong out of the north at 25 miles an hour. That gust to 38 miles an hour here on our Frontier Ag Cam. We'll bring you into Wichita. Not dealing with the snow yet, but in the next hour or so, we're going to start to see that change really, really quick. You notice our temperature 44 degrees. That rain coming down pretty heavy, bringing a lot of that cold air from above into the ground area. So we're going to see that temperature fall. So again, an initial period of rain looks like in Wichita before a very quick changeover here to snow. We'll see that snow come down pretty heavy. I'll step out of the way. Our weather bug sensor showing some of those wind gusts all across Cakeland. Ulysses at 34 miles an hour there at Joyce Elementary, Sublette Elementary, 39 miles an hour. You see the sustained winds near 20 but gusting upwards of 37 there just live on that sensor. Elkhart a little calmer, but their wind gust still 36 miles an hour earlier. Hoxie was dealing with 33 mile an hour wind gust. Their sustained winds continue to be into the mid 20s. We're taking a look at wind speeds all across Cakeland. You can see 20s and 30s extremely common all across, but we're starting to wind those winds down just a little bit across northwest Kansas, only in the low to mid 20s there. You see 39 mile an hour winds sustained there in Russell, 35 miles an hour in Great Bend. The wind gust even stronger than that. You see the 52 mile an hour wind gust there in Great Bend, 44 miles an hour in Hayes. See a 48 miles an hour there with those blizzard conditions there in Garden City. All of this culminating in the blizzard warning, which is pretty much spread across most of Cakeland. This originally was along from I-70 north. We've extended it southwest toward Dodge City as that heavy snow band moves in. We're going to continue to see that heavy snow push off to the north and east. Purple counties, the winter weather advisory that does include the Wichita metro area. Again, we could be looking at one to three inches of snow, and that could come down pretty quick. So certainly be aware as we get into the morning hours thinking after 7 30 8 o'clock is when we'll see that changeover that snow coming down heavy for part of the morning hours so certainly travel is going to be a little rough even more so as you get further to the north where those blizzard warnings are in effect for those wind speeds and again the accumulating snow and we're talking accumulations again less as you go southwest about one to two inches across basically the southern tier counties now right along that line here where i've got the two to five inches that's where we start to see dodge city and wichita in there so again we're looking maybe two to three inches in those spots now as you move further to the north, especially north and east, we start to tick those totals up higher. Two to five inches in the light blue, five to eight inches. That would include the Salina area. And again, we'll move the really heavy snows off across northeast Kansas where we could see upwards of eight to ten inches of snow. That combined with the blowing is going to create the blizzard conditions. You really see that storm system really digging in again, pushing a lot further south than we had originally planned. This storm really intensifying as it continues to push off to the east. So again, we're seeing that snow make it down almost to the Oklahoma border. Order. We're going to run one of our RPM models, really picking this up very well. This model, I think, is the most accurate of the ones that I've been using this morning, really depicting the end of the snow out west here as we get through the morning, pushing this off to 10 o'clock. You see how quickly this is moving. So areas Wakini, Oakley clearing out, even Garden City clearing out pretty quickly early or late this morning as we move into the early afternoon hours. One o'clock here, still dealing with the snow along the I-135 corridor. Notice Wichita really on the southern edge of that. So again, we may clear out of here about lunchtime and we'll see that snow really continue to push on off to the east through four o'clock by about three or four o'clock.
o'clock. I would imagine most areas in Cakeland done with the snow. The winds will still be pretty strong across central and northern Kansas, so still blowing snow even after the snow has stopped falling. But I think as we get toward 5 and 6 o'clock, we start to see the winds wind down and conditions really starting to improve. So if you have travel plans, certainly be best to wait probably till after 5 or 6 o'clock before you even start considering making any drives out across Cakeland today. Well, Blake, to say the least, the travel conditions are a nightmare. I am now returning to Salina, so I am eastbound on 70, about to approach exit 249, the Halstead Road exit. KDOT crews are in the process of shutting down the interstate at exit 244. You cannot go west on I-70 past exit 244. They've got KDOT crews right now putting up cones. A sheriff uh, sitting there at the exit. There was a vehicle in the ditch right at that exit, and the sheriff reported to me that they have uh, a jackknife semi further up the interstate. Obviously, I'm not going to make it out that far. Wanted to get up here and just get a report and kind of see what the conditions were like. As you can see on my live stream here, very, very limited visibility near zero at times here as I approach uh, the 135 junction here on I-70 eastbound. The heavy snows that fell overnight in Garden City gave way to a very icy and dangerous drive along US 50 this morning. Right on the eastern outskirts of town just before sunrise, these two vehicles slid off the highway at nearly the same time. This SUV on the eastbound side trying and failing to get out of the snow on the eastbound ditch, sliding along in the ditch and unable to get back onto the road. This pickup truck across the highway was even more stuck, spinning its wheels to no avail after sliding from the eastbound lane into the westbound ditch. From there, things got even worse. So this is US 50 to the east of Garden City, and watch this. I mean, it is a solid sheet of ice, this entire highway just absolutely ice covered. My dashboard mounted camera captured just how slick the roads were. Everyone, including this truck, were struggling to stay on the roads. That drive from Cimarron to Garden City is roughly about 30 miles. It took me almost an hour and a half. US 50 from the east side of Garden City to Cimarron was one continuous sheet of ice. It was lucky if you could even make 30 miles an hour. Well, Kat, I'm in Dodge City, and I arrived here about half an hour ago, literally as the snow began to fall here in Dodge. And I think Mother Nature is punishing me for dancing in the snow the last couple of days because the snowflakes are coming in like BBs. We got a wind out of the north here that's blowing some of that snow in my face. And these are kind of hard, pellety snowflakes so far, but they're coming down pretty copiously, at least compared to what they were about 15 minutes ago when the flurries really just started falling. So no accumulations yet here in Dodge City. But again, the snow just getting started here. We expect this to remain the case overnight into tomorrow morning as the snow continues to fall. Very cold and windy and with the wind though it may add a little added dimension of travel issues with some of the limited visibility that could fall once the snow does start to accumulate here through the evening into the overnight hours. The interstate there behind me running pretty good. The roads just wet for the time being. Now earlier again, we saw some of the heaviest bands roll through. Started snowing earlier on me in La Crosse. And then as I worked my way further to the east, I got into some bigger snows. And I'm not kidding, folks. I had snowflakes the size of my shoe coming down on me there. It was something crazy to be seen. More storms caused bigger issues further east on I-70 later in the day. Hey, I'm rolling up on a down semi here that's got uh, the eastbound lanes of I-70 partially blocked here near Ellis. This semi was flipped over three miles west of Ellis, the driver taken away by ambulance. Traffic was slowed for a while as the scene was cleared. As those storms continued their eastward trek along I-70, heavy rains and wind made for a slow drive. Even as the storms have weakened, the rain and the wind that's left behind with these things continues to make for a slow drive here along I-70, taking quite a bit of time to get between Hayes and Salina as these storms move east. Well, Jay, I'll tell you, it is a little chilly today, and what's making it a little chillier is that wind that you're talking about here. We're getting an occasional gust upwards of 20 miles an hour here at the school, and with just a hair bit of light drizzle, you're definitely going to want to wear the long sleeves. I certainly did today, and everybody's taking heed of that advice. We're going to take you out on a Friday Blitz forecast. We're going to be looking 58 degrees right around kickoff temperatures. We're going to be seeing those winds, and as we get toward 10 o'clock, we're not going to see the temperatures fall that much, only a few degrees to around 55, but those winds and light showers continuing to be a possibility for you tonight.
Meteorologist Tony Lawback is looking at the weather outside right now. Tony, tell us a break is coming soon. Greg, a break is coming soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See, my job is done. We'll see you later. Okay. Uh, best man of the hour right I there. I know, right? It's, can we just, I'm going to be the man of the hour at least for the next hour. Um, Absolutely. Okay. You've got it. <laughs> right. But unfortunately, that break is not going to come today. And we're already, as Greg said, dealing with the heat and humidity. See the heat index already here at Wichita. This is our weather bug sensor here at the studio. Already approaching 90 degrees. And Greg's right. You're going to walk outside. It's just going to smack you right in the face. So for those of you who did not just throw your TVs out the window, what? here is a look at our question of the day.